And next on a related issue, we'll look at limiting tuition increases. Naomi Jacobson says that um, tuition should be related to financial aids, uh, financial aid that the students can receive, and that there are other sources of funding that the university obtains besides um, through tuition and through the general fund of the state. Rob Meister says he doesn't want to limit U of I um, when state funding of the university is low. That, uh, too much money is going to colleges in Chicago. Um, Michael Lingendorf is against any unfunded mandates, uh, as is Chad Hayes. Um, says that the state cannot pay the colleges on time, and so he's very reluctant to uh, mandate what they should do. Well, again, I, I sort of stop in the middle of that. I think that uh, the tuition has to be relative to financial aid, and um, the state does, you know, look at the tuition increases, but also they um, we're also, you know, looking at the budget and the amount of money we give them. I think one of the things you remember too, though, is that there's more than the general revenue fund. When when you think about the cuts that are made, there there are other ways, other sources of revenue that come from the state to the university, and those are through payments for health insurance. Those are through other uh, payments that the state makes on behalf of the university of Illinois. So I believe that there is this relationship, and. Um, when you look at the capital bill, look how much capital this area got just from that capital bill that we got. Look at the construction and the jobs that were created from that. This is important. That's why uh, this relationship between the state and the university. Well, as a hypothetical, the, uh, the legislator could do just about anything that they want to uh, be able to limit the growth of tuition. But the problem is, is you don't want to push the university <coughs> into a corner. Um, if it proves that it needs to get more money and we're not funding it as much as promised in the past, then that's really the only way that they have an option. It's either that or they continue to lay people off and cause even more problems for our own local economy. Um, I think one of the best things that we could do, like I said before, is just fund it correctly. Uh, I think that there's a lot of money out there. We just need to fight to get some of the more, more of the money to be spent down here. When it comes to education dollars, and you look at the state of Illinois, 60% of our state revenue for education is going up to Chicago where there's 40 percent of the students. That doesn't make any sense to me. I run a business, I can tell you, you can't do that very long. Well. I think we need to fight to be able to bring some of that more, more of that money downstate and give it to the universities in central Illinois. And we'll see a big, big difference, not only in our local economy, but as a, as a full culture for the U of I. They'll, they'll feel a lot better growing with us. With the full one. Now, um, the next topic came up because of a question that I asked and that I wrote on the question card. Um, basically involves a little story of mine. My family and I rented a house from a certain pair of landlords. Um, I'll get into who they are some other time. Anyway, um, all the stuff wasn't up to code. Um, there was a um, main water shut off that you had to go through a bunch of muck in order to shut off the water. Um, one time the water heater busted and the fire department had to come and shut off our water because we couldn't find the shut off and they couldn't find it either. They had to use a, a water main outside of the house actually. Um, anyway, th this pair of landlords we found out later um, notorious in our area for renting out places that had already been condemned and you know they didn't even bother to f fix it or anything they would just rent it out again and they would do all kinds of stuff like this so I related this story um, pretty much as briefly as I could and then I asked the question um, what would you do to make sure things like this don't happen in our area or in Illinois ever again? And um, they softened the question um, when they got it, and they turned it into this. Champaign County has seen recent examples of landlords providing substandard accommodations to tenants but suffering no consequences for their actions. What steps can be taken to protect tenants' rights and hold landlords responsible for their actions? 
And that's a great question. I think it comes uh, back to community. Um, what we need to do is uh, really, you know, we thankfully we have a pretty strong tenants union in this area. Um, that's always a good way is that a combined voice is going to be better to bring things to light. Um, but one of the things we do have to remember is we do need to deal with the people that are property owners and ask them why, why not. Um, I don't want to make assumptions about why somebody would ever let something, uh, you know, be run in an incorrect way or fall short on its quality. Um, but I feel like there's got to be some reason. And I always want to know what that is and see if there's a, a best way to try to work together and not assume that any one person is the problem. See if we can come together and find out what's causing it and how we can fix it. Uh, as, as far as Champaign and Urbana goes, of course this is a local issue, but I've tried to work with um, tenants and uh, landlords in the last you know, several years. And in fact, I had um, brought to my attention the hours that, that people can, that the landlord or someone representing the landlord, a care person can get into a dwelling that is, uh, that the tenants are, are in, if, the, if that needs repair. And uh, we tried very hard and we tried to model it after what uh, the tenants union does here. And there was some pushback from other areas of the state and we weren't able to make that happen yet. But uh, compared to other areas, we're in pretty good shape here, and I think it is because of the local um, cooperation that we get. The tenants union is very good at following up on issues when they uh, have someone come to them because of the situation. As you just heard, Meister is really for working with the property owners. And Naomi Jacobson is for working with both the tenants and the owners and um, is very complimentary to our local tenants union, which it it does a good job, but I, I think there are cases, including um, my own um, and my family's, which it wasn't really that effective. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, Michael Langendorf says that uh, the government must be vigilant and make sure that the property owners are doing what they should um, when they rent um, apartments and houses out. And Chad Hayes uh, was talking about possibly going to a night court system instead of having everything to do with uh, landowners and tenants going through a regular court system, which can be pretty unwieldy at times. The next issue we shall cover is expungement or sealing of records involving drug cases, um, especially after a lot of time has gone by. Um, all the candidates are in favor of it, but they all say it depends on the degree of the offense and how much time has gone by. Next issue we shall cover is driver's licenses for immigrants, particularly undocumented immigrants. Um, a lot of them drive without any insurance just because they can't get driver's licenses and it's impossible to get insurance without getting a license first. Um, so all the candidates except John Babinick were fully in favor. John Babinick says he could be in favor, um, just that he made the comment that um, to make sure that you know immigrants um, don't end up being treated better by the system than um, Illinois citizens. I believe that uh, there certainly are ways to improve this and, and getting uh, auto insurance is something that's very important and I believe I voted for a bill that would have allowed a certificate. Uh, but beyond that, it's very important for uh, people to be able to get a driver's license. And I think there's um, some discussion going on right now throughout the state about a way to be able to do this. Um, Immigrants get what they call a, a tax number when they are paying their uh, first, the first time they pay taxes in Illinois. And I believe that it would be good if we could pass legislation just to, it would just take a very short uh, change in, in one part of the legislature to say that that number can be used if there isn't a social security number. That way people will have a driver's license in order to get one learn how to drive, they have to take a written test, they have to take a driving test, and they have to have auto insurance. Without doing that, we're going to have unlicensed people and uninsured people driving our cars. That's absolutely right. We, we 
Next, we shall look at a range of environmental issues. Uh, Naomi Jacobson said that she introduced a bill to prohibit the dumping of PCBs that have ended up in the drinking water of our area. Rob Meister says that he would like to negotiate with businesses first before taking any type of legislative action. A uh, different discussion came up uh, with the other two debates, um, that of clean coal, um, specifically a enterprise called Sunrise Coal. Michael Lagendorf says he's against it. Chad Hayes says, quote, I don't think coal is evil, end quote. Uh, because there are many jobs in coal and but he is concerned about any environmental impacts as well but mostly he is for the idea of coal uh, Mike Frerich says that he acknowledges that there are problems with coal but it provides jobs and energy and that the key is to make coal a clean enterprise John Babinick said um, quote, no society has ever found security without exploiting its natural resources, end quote. And that he is fully in favor of anything that provides jobs and energy and isn't as concerned about any environmental impact. I introduced legislation to prohibit the dumping of PCBs in the Clinton landfill. And as many of you know, the Clinton landfill is over the Muhammad Aquifer, which is our sole source of drinking water, not just for the people of Urbana and Champaign, but many communities in East Central Illinois. I want to continue to work on that. I'm also carrying legislation that will set the standards for hydraulic fracturing in Illinois. We are in negotiations now with the oil and gas industry. Illinois needs to have standards in place for when fracking begins. We should be a model for other industries would like to dump their PCBs in our area because, you know, it's not going to affect them. I think they need to be uh, contained at their source of, you know, where they're coming from. And then they need to be disposed of in a chemical way. And there are actually ways that are already developed out there. But the problem is that the uh, industry doesn't want to spend that little bit of extra money to do it right. And so I am going to continue to work in a bipartisan manner, which we have been doing, to uh, keep the PCBs out of the Clinton land. Uh, I think all of us uh, never like the idea of something being uh, <coughs> any kind of chemicals. Um, it's always that tough uh, tightrope to walk of if something is going to happen, are we going to do it better and more safely than other people? It's a tough balance. Um, but I would want to be able to, to go to business to business and say, all right, what, what, what do you need from us? What can we do to make things so that you can afford to do it the proper way or do it the chemical way, whatever is best? Because, um, again, I think that a lot of people that are operating in Illinois, they're doing things on such a, a tight budget with a lot of regulations as it is. And a lot of times that's what causes them to do things that are irresponsible because then they can't afford to do it the way they would if they had a little bit of extra money or a little bit of extra time to do so. Um, so I want to know what's holding them from doing that. If it's just a money issue, what can we do to make it a little easier for them to do business so that they can do it in a safe way? And the next issue we shall look at is collective bargaining for public employees. Um, Jacobson is in favor. Meister is in favor. Michael Langendorf is in favor. Chad Hayes says he is in favor, but um, with exceptions that there are cases where um, collective bargaining can get unwieldy for the state. Um, I believe he related something about certain management positions felt like they were not um, getting that much compared to the labor that worked under them and things like that and they decide to unionize as well and you know things like that it can get pretty unwieldy uh mike frerix is in favor and john babinick is in favor um he just noted that there may be some positions um i believe he said um a number of positions where 
um, the governor himself picks or herself picks um, who it is is going to be working under them and um, uh, those positions have been unionized so it's very difficult for the, the um, governor to do what he has to do um, with the collective bargaining in effect for those employees um, as well as the other ones where it's perfectly fine. Well, I think they, they can be um, and they should be. Uh, I think there's actually President Reagan who said that if you take away someone's ability to get together and create a group of workers to unite against something that you're going to take away one of their biggest civil liberties. And I agree with that. Um, I think that it's also one of the things that we have to look at the balance between the money that we have to spend on state and public workers and what they their counterparts make within the private sector. Um, there has slowly started to be an imbalance. My mother was a state worker. I wish I could pay her a million dollars a year. I wish that teachers could make that much, and I kind of feel like they deserve it. But unfortunately, that's just not the money we had. Um, that's one of the big things we have to do about living within our means, showing that we can have a balanced budget. Uh, it will transcend a lot of issues that we have, just if we can show that we're spending the money we do have correctly. I do believe in collective bargaining rights uh, for many people in this audience that may have heard me say that I was union wed, union bred, union wed, and I'm a union mom, uh, <laughs> and now I'm mother law too. So uh, I certainly do believe in them, and um, I think we need to protect them. People should have that option, should be able to uh, organize and come together. Very often, uh, you know, one or two people can't do it on their own. That's the reason for organizing and getting together. And that helps come, coming together at the table. And yes, the unions do need to come to the table and uh, have their representation talk with leaders or uh, whatever the issues are. So it, it is a two-way street, and I believe that uh, collective bargaining is a good thing. And now she'll look at another issue. Um, another hot button topic. I don't have any recordings on this, by the way. Um, that of same sex marriage. Um, Chad Hayes is against it. Michael Langendorf is in favor. Um, Mike Frerix is in favor. In fact, he passed legislation for civil unions. And John Babinick is against it. He gave rather curious reasoning. Um, the notion that the government shouldn't be involved with marriage at all, so therefore he's against any legislation to um, alter or expand um, the definition of marriage. And the next issue we should look at is um, the Medicaid expense. Um, there have been uh, many issues with trying the state trying to pay for Medicaid and looking for ways um, to expand the budget so that uh, Illinois can afford it. Naomi Jacobson says that people need Medicaid. She's in favor of putting a bill in to check um, the recipients for eligibility. Rob Meister says that people running it don't know business and don't know medicine. And he gave the example of nurses hired just to do paperwork and therefore wasting money. They could be used for other things. Michael Langendorf says that Medicaid is a vital part of our safety net. Chad Hayes says that Medicaid is the source of much of the state's debt and needs to be looked into. John Babinick says that Medicaid needs drastic reform. And finally, Mark Frerick says that he already voted for Medicaid reform, but that this issue needs to be revisited annually. I think the state um, is really trying. You know, we, we do have Medicaid. We have people who need Medicaid. So when we talk about cutting those expenses, we have to make sure that we're not going to cut people who uh, are relying on us, people who have a disability, people who... Um, have had some uh, impact in their lives that has caused them to become uh, Medicaid eligible. Those are not the cuts that we need to make. We do need to make sure, and I believe we have put into place this year, making sure that people who are enrolled in Medicaid uh, 
to live in the state to qualify for it. And uh, this is just something that is, is taking place now. And I think that we'll see some results from that. Well, it starts from uh, the, the legislature that we have. Um, we have far too many people that are making these deals for us with insurance companies and talking about the cost of prescription refills and things like that that don't know medicine and they don't know business. So it's very difficult for them to come to the table and pay an appropriate amount. Uh, as I said before, we have one in five people using the system that aren't actually Illinois citizens. We also have a three times as high prescription refill rate, all things that could save us a ton of money. And one of the biggest problems we have, which in Illinois we're all used to, is that we have such a thick bureaucracy that every year a higher, higher percentage of the registered nurses are being hired not for health care, but to do the paperwork it takes to be able to provide medical care for people. That's silly. We're, we're getting away from caring for our people and caring for our patients because we have to pay for paperwork. That's not something that we should be doing in Illinois. We should be a leader in health care. Until we show that we can do it correctly, people aren't going to really use it here, and it's going to continue to be a problem for our budget. And the final issue we shall look at is one that only came up in the 104th representative district um, in that debate, um, licensing for midwives. Michael Langendorf is fully in favor of it. Chad Hayes says that he would be in favor of it. In most situations, it's fine, but there are a number of situations, however small, um, where it would be best um, if the woman having the baby would be in the hospital uh, with full access, you know, to doctors and everything like that. Um, so when a, such a bill came up, he voted against it. So um, he's pretty much against it. Um, I don't have any recordings for that, and that's the last issue. By the way, we operate a page on Facebook called Holding My Nose Voting for Obama So I Don't Die for Romney's Toxic Fumes. And it's at uh, fb.com slash holding my nose or facebook.com slash holding my nose. Doesn't matter. And this is who we're endorsing. Using a eight color scale um, by the colors in the rainbow from red all the way to purple. Uh, basically, it's a, a one through eight scale. So um, Naomi Jacobson gets a seven out of eight because um, a lot of the positions are, I think, really good for us. Um, Rob Meister got less. Oh, and by the way, we felt the need to do counter endorsements just because there are a lot of good points that the op the opponents brought up, um, as well as um, a kind of general electability if it were not for the main endorsee running for election. And yes, that's right, although we tend to be pretty liberal, we are endorsing a Republican for the 104th representative district. Um, he seems to be doing a very good job. It seems have a very good grasp on issues, uh, at least better than the opponent. Um, Michael Legendorf seems to be, it seems like he's running at the last minute. And although he's got a good grasp on issues, it's just, I think Chad Hayes is uh, better. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Once again, I'm Ray Arias. But make sure if you haven't done so, go out and vote. Yeah, I, I can cut whatever I need to cut. Hi, I'm Ray Arias. I'm speaking to you from uh, my front steps. They're not at all like the Tea Party stuff that you see federally. Like, oh my gosh, we got problems with voter fraud. You know, and, um, all this. Uh, all this kind of wacky stuff, they're more reasonable, and, and there are even a lot of positions I could agree with. Um, they see many cuts to be made in the budget. Um, they don't want, or, I'm sorry, they do want term limits. I guess I'll cut that one later. 
they do want term limits and no. I'd like to thank you for watching uh, once again I'm Ray Arias and, <laughs> and go out and vote